Okay, welcome everyone. Today we are out here in the streets again, Lima, Peru, and we are in Barrio Chino, Chinatown. And this is actually one of the largest and oldest Chinatowns in all of the Western Hemisphere, in like all the Americas. Uh, and we're gonna come, we're gonna check it out, and we're gonna learn a little bit more about the history of uh, Chinese people and people of Chinese descent in Peru. So, if that's something that you want to see, come along. Before we do that, I just want to say real quick thank you very much for watching the video. Click the like button and the subscribe button and leave a comment down below. It's free, it's easy, and it will help the channel grow and help this content reach other YouTube viewers. All right, back to the video. So here we are, it's popping. Definitely popping, lots of people. Lots of people out in uh, Chinatown in Lima, Peru. As you can see right here, it's pretty crazy. There's a ton of people. And we're actually here walking down the, uh, the old street, Calle Capon. And Calle Capon is like the original, it's the original uh, Chinatown street. And this is where like Chinese settlers originally settled in the Chinatown area. Now, of course, it's a very like uh, touristy spot. There's a lot of, not just touristy, like for foreign tourists, but you know, locals. Locals come in here to uh, enjoy restaurants and shops and whatnot and hang out with their families on a Sunday. So, the history of uh, Chinese immigration here, it goes way, way back. Um, in the Spanish colonial empire days, there were like a very, very small amount of um, people from, from Asia, and most of them actually were not, uh, were not Chinese. They were coming from the Philippines, which was a Spanish uh, colony at the time, right? But the, there kind of was like not a distinction made, and a lot of the people who came during that time were just referred to as Indio China, Indio Chino, which is like Chinese Indians basically, because Philippines was the, the Indies, right? The East Indies. And uh, that, that, that immigration is, is relatively um, insignificant to the larger population of Chinese immigrants here and Chinese people of Chinese descent here. The real um, immigration boom, you know, becomes in the, uh, the 1800s, right? in the mid 1800s with a lot of Chinese contract workers who were signed into contracts and then imported over here as contract laborers in sort of the uh, like after the uh, end of slavery in the Americas because all of the plantations that you know previously required slaves in order to operate well they still needed labor and if they didn't have any labor, they weren't going to be able to operate. One of the things that we want to do while we're here, in addition to talking about the history, is I want to get some food. And there's a restaurant that is right down here, I think, on this street that I've heard is pretty good. And we're going to check it out. So uh, let's let's do that first. We'll go get this, check this place out, and then we'll uh, we'll explore a little more around. We'll talk a little bit more about the history. All right, so we found the place. It's right across the street here. Walok. Walok. There's, there's two of them. There's like a little bakery section and a restaurant section. And then, of course, there's, you know, uh, barbecue pork and roast duck in the, in the uh, window there. So that's a good sign. That's a good sign. And uh, I've been walking around a bit, so I'm pretty hungry. So we're going to check this place out. We'll let you know how it is. So it was pretty good that place. Uh, had some dim sum, of course. You saw the pictures. They look delicious, right? The real interesting thing to me was we got those, uh, those like fried dumplings, right? And I've had those before in uh, different restaurants, of course, different Chinese restaurants. And the interesting thing here was like in most of the places where I've had those, or pretty much everywhere except this place, uh, the wrapper that it came in 
is made of wheat. And I think it was made partially of wheat here, but I could also taste um, corn in the wrapper too, which makes sense, right? Because like here in Peru, uh, corn is a big staple and it has been for a long time, a staple grain, much more so than wheat, right? So like it would make sense that like if you have locally sourced um, wrappers and also like going back, I would imagine, when they were making the, if they were making dishes like that, maybe they would be using corn as like part of the, the grain that they were using in the flour to make those. I don't know. It was different and I really liked it. Uh, but anyway, yeah, that, that food was really good. Good place. If you ever come here, uh, check that place out. Wallach. So the neighborhood is very busy today. Very busy. It's Sunday. It's actually uh, not only is it Sunday, it's Palm Sunday. So it's a very important Sunday for especially for a Catholic country like Peru. And uh, lots of people out on the streets in the market today. This is uh, of course like the oldest uh, the oldest or one of the oldest Chinatowns in the entire Western Hemisphere, right? So like we mentioned before, the, um, the largest wave of Chinese immigrants came here during like the 1850s, during the 1850s up to like the 1870s, right? So 20, 25 years or so worth of, uh, worth of immigration in, and a lot of them came uh, as like contract, contract laborers. And the contract labor that they were doing was backbreaking labor. I mean, they were working in sugar mines or sugar uh, plantations out on the coast. They were working doing uh, guano farming out in the uh, the islands off the coast here. Because guano, which is basically just like derivative of uh, of you know bur bird and bat poop. Oh, hold on a second. It's an interesting market here that I want to go into. Anyway guano farming out there for you know fertilizer which was a big big product and it's being sold very very uh, uh, profitable product for um, for Peru during the 1800s especially during the mid 1800s check this place out it's pretty cool found a little market I think a lot of stuff here is open but some of the stuff is closed because like I said it's Sunday but um, Anyway, back to the, uh, the history. There was about 100,000 over the course of those 20, 25 years, 100,000 of these uh, contract workers that came over here. And a lot of times their contract would last for, you know, seven, 10, maybe up to like 15 years. But when the contract ended, a lot of them decided to stay here. And a lot of them, they were, the contract workers were mostly men. And a lot of them decided to stay and uh, a lot of them married, um, they married Peruvian women. So you have a lot of people who are of Chinese descent here in Peru. In fact, uh, I think the estimates uh, as of, you know, like recently are that the, uh, there's like 3 million people who are at least partially of Chinese descent, right? in Peru and that's huge because Peru like the population of Peru is not that big there you can see the uh, the arch down there where we came in and the street music playing people hanging out walking around all right let's find our way back out of this market but anyway like I said the the population of Peru is not even, it's not very big, right? It's not a super large country. It's only about 30 million people in Peru. So, you know, a population of 3 million, that's like 10% of the, 10% of the country is, uh, you know, at least partially of Chinese descent. And it makes sense because not only are they the descendants of the the contract workers, you know, those 100,000 contract workers that came here during those 20 years or so. But in addition to that, like because those people, they sort of laid the groundwork for future immigration, right? So anytime you have any kind of uh, crisis or hard times, either in China or in countries where, um, 
where there are people of Chinese descent like Indonesia, Indonesia, Malaysia, places like that. Anytime in the future where you have something, some sort of crisis, you know, uh, a world war or a communist revolution in China or, um, you know, a wave of um, anti, uh, anti-Chinese anti violence or something like there was in Malaysia and Indonesia. You have people who, they, they're fleeing the country, they're fleeing that situation and they end up coming here because there's already an established population. There's an established social network, there's uh, organizations and, um, uh, you know, for, for specifically for uh, immigrants, like Chinese immigrants, right? So you have like a, a really, really interesting mix of um, different generations of Chinese immigrants, not just people who were like descendants of Chinese immigrants from way, way back. So you have some Chinese immigrants that are here that are literally, they just, they're either first generation here or they're actually immigrants from China from recent years. Or you have people who like, their Chinese roots go back five, six generations, back to the 1800s. So it's a really, really interesting mix. Anyway, we're back here at the arch where we came in. Uh, you know, one thing I want to find, actually, while we're here is I want to find a bakery. Maybe get some like Chinese bakery stuff and take it, take it back with us. So let's look for that. Let's look for that. And then once we find that, we can talk a little bit more about the, uh, the history. Found this, found this little mall here. Walk through. Looks like mostly like gift shops, stuff like that. Selling, uh, what's this place? I think this place is selling candles and incense and stuff like that. It's pretty cool. As you walk off of the main streets here in uh, Chinatown, there's like all of these little uh, mall type places, right? Like little uh, walk through gallerias, shopping mall type places with stalls, people selling all kinds of stuff. I've noticed more than more than a few of these. This isn't the only one. Oh, this place has like a whole second floor. Hmm, let's go check it out. So, so since we've had our uh, my delicious Chinese food, we should talk about Chinese food here in Peru. Because actually, Chinese food, or here as they call it, chifa, which I think comes from, I know if I'm getting this correctly, the words chi and fan, which I think means eat rice. And it's sort of like a Spanish borrowed word, chifa. And it pretty much refers to like any Chinese food or any like Chinese ref restaurant. Chinese restaurants around here are called chifas. So you have like a, um, and th there's tons of them. That's the other thing about the Chinese restaurants uh, in Peru. There are absolutely tons of them, thousands, thousands of them. Uh, because it's like the most popular, um, I think we've reached the nail and hair salon floor. I think that's all there is. Let's keep going up. There's like uh, thousands of, tens of thousands, uh, probably even more Chinese restaurants called ch Chifas in Peru. They're super, super popular. It's the uh, most popular like type of food of like from a foreign country, like foreign origin, right? In, in all of Peru. So it's extremely, extremely popular. And not only is the chifa popular, but like the ingredients are super popular too. And they've become like part of, um, uh, a, a lot of them have sort of like become part of Peruvian uh, criollo cuisine, which is like the Peruvian, I guess what you would call Peruvian food, right? Like, that's the thing about food in Peru. Um, it's got so many different influences. If you're from the United States or you're from another country and you're thinking about, like, what is Peruvian food? Like, that would probably be criollo food. But even that has, like, been changed. And there's a lot of differences and a lot of things have changed about that over the years. But Chinese food here, or chifa, 
right? Originally, it's the same story of sort of like how food, you know, from a foreign country usually starts in, uh, in any new country, right? People are eating it because it's their, like, what they're familiar with. And then eventually these people start opening up restaurants. And that's how it happened here. The food started to become accepted. People started to open restaurants. Uh, especially these, uh, the contract workers who settled here after, um, after their contracts were up in the 1800s. And the food started to become popular mainly amongst uh, like poor people because it's really uh, affordable, right? And it's filling and uh, delicious, of course. But, you know, for a long time, because it's a food that's just associated with poor people, all the rich people, they didn't want to eat it because there was a stigma. But eventually, it's just too damn delicious. And the ingredients start making their way into usage. Rich people start, start cooking with certain ingredients, specifically like ginger, soy sauce, and Chinese onions, and stuff like that. And eventually, after a long enough time, it just becomes widely accepted and widely popular. And like I mentioned, it's like the, uh, the most popular type of food from like of a foreign origin. Um, in all of Peru and you could definitely see that because like not just in this neighborhood in Barrio Chino of course here there's tons of Chinese restaurants but like all over the place in all the neighborhoods I've visited in the neighborhood where I'm staying there are tons of chifas there's like one on every block basically so it's super 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 popular and there's also like to this day still pretty close uh, a relationship, like diplomatic relationship and an economic relationship between Peru and China. Peru has like the oldest, pretty much the oldest uh, Chinese communities here. This is like one of the oldest Chinatowns. The, some of the original settlers, Chinese settlers in the Americas were here in Peru. So the history goes way back and because there are so many people here uh, like that are at least partly of Chinese descent um, the relationship between uh, Peru and China has remained pretty close they have uh, trade deals so there's a lot of Chinese products here in fact it's really interesting I've seen a lot of um, uh, I don't know Chinese brand products here or products that are like maybe not branded Chinese brands but they're definitely like made in China um, food products and stuff like that under brands that I had never seen before in the United States but they make them here or they have them here and they're made in China so I think that's really interesting that they have this relationship still the economic and diplomatic relationship between the countries uh, but it makes sense because given the history right uh, given the history and also the economic opportunity that there is here in uh, in Peru lots of Lots of consumers in China is an export-based economy. They need to export products in order to maintain their economy. And Peru is a big export market. Now, while relations between the two countries are, like I said, pretty good, um, there has been some tension recently over uh, a port, a big mega port that uh, the Chinese have built or invested in building up in northern Peru in a city which I am blanking on the name right now but I'll put it in the subtitle and um, originally it was going to be you know China's mega port access to uh, to South America and it was a, a very very large project and it was originally I think supposed to be exclusive for Chinese companies and um, Recently, the Peruvian government, I think, has uh, wanted to change the terms of the deal and make it so it's no longer exclusive and that other countries, co companies, shipping companies from other countries will be able to import through that port as well. And uh, the Chinese, having invested uh, a lot of money into the development of the port, are not very happy about that. So, like I said, there is some tension. Um, it's not a completely 100% tension-free relationship between the two countries. It's a really cool building here. I have no idea what this is. There's some police in front of it though, and it's all gated off, so imagine some sort of a government building maybe. Pretty cool. But um, now throughout all this history though, the, you know, the, uh, it hasn't been all like rosy, especially for Chinese immigrants. There has been a lot of, uh, hold on a second, we're coming around to the front of this building here that we saw. I wanna see what this is. 
Looks like there's a sign here. Oh, it's the Congress. Congress. Congreso de la República del Perú. So this is the Peruvian Congress. Right here. Pretty cool. That makes sense why it's all gated off and there's a bunch of police in front of it. Um, but anyway, the, uh, like I mentioned, the experience, not entirely rosy for uh, Chinese immigrants here. Um, they came over, like I mentioned, as contract laborers. They were worked extremely hard uh, for basically no wages. I mean, when you're a contract laborer, you're basically a slave for the, for the term of your contract. And that's more or less how these workers were treated. They were replacing slave labor in uh, places like, uh, you know, the guano mines and the, um, uh, the uh, sugar plantations. And so, you know, that's how they were treated. They were treated very, very poorly. And there was uh, a lot of discrimination um, against them. And there, that's not just during that time, but, you know, after the contracts were up and they decided to settle here, there's still discrimination and they're still treated poorly um, in, in, you know, future decades. So much so that in the late 1800s, during the... Uh, War of the Pacific against Chile, uh, you have like um, Chinese uh, settlers who, and immigrants who are working, uh, working, still working on plantations or working in other places in uh, in Peru, and a lot of them there were actually organized um, rebellions during the time, like taking advantage of the chaos of the, Ch of the Chilean army invading, especially here in Lima. And because of that, you ended up with a split community where some people in the Chinese Peruvian community would side with the Chileans, hoping that potentially the Chileans would win the war, take over territory here in Peru, and then provide for a better existence for some of the Chinese Peruvians. But Chile did, did not take over, like they took over a small amount of territory in southern Peru, but they didn't take over like Lima. Even though they did occupy Lima temporarily, the Chilean army didn't stay there. And the backlash to that afterwards was a lot of anti-Chinese violence um, amongst Peruvians um, who you know, saw the Chinese as like traitors who uh, were somehow at fault uh, even partially for the Chinese invade or the uh, Chilean invasion and uh, the occupation of Lima. So, kind of rough times, uh, rough times for sure. Um, not exactly the best, the best history for Chinese Peruvians. One of the one of the large businesses that popped up here in um, uh, in Peru in the late 1800s, right, because of all these uh, Chinese uh, immigrants who came and settled here was like import export businesses for Chinese products, especially Chinese food products, specifically ingredients and stuff. Because you had all these people who wanted to cook Chinese food, they have either for a restaurant or just for themselves, and it's hard to find the right ingredients. So you have a lot of importer exporters who, um, who you know show up here in Peru and and start businesses and to this day there are still some very large businesses both like import export and like market supermarket type businesses that are you know the history goes way back and they were started by uh, Chinese merchants and investors so Chinese immigrants and the children of Chinese immigrants began to open businesses here in Peru and uh, one of the most successful ones arguably is this right here, Wong, Wong Supermercados. And this actually, right here in San Isidro, is the uh, location of the original Wong Tienda. And it was founded by a guy named Erasmo Wong Chiang. And I've been trying to find uh, information about whether he was an immigrant or if he was a first generation, a uh, Tucson here in Peru and uh, I've got conflict conflicting sources so if anybody knows put it down in the comments but um, there's this is probably one of the most well-known most popular supermarket chains in all of Peru Wong and uh, it's no longer uh, owned by um, 
the Wong, like the original owners. I think it's owned by a Chilean company now, but still, they um, expanded out over the course of, you know, probably like 80 years. I think the first one was founded in the 1940s, and they expanded out to um, to many, many stores. I mean, there's 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 multiple stores um, here in Lima and in different places around Peru. So it's very, very popular, and um, they've been known for like having really, really good service and good prices, and it seems to be a very, very popular brand. So just an example of some of the like uh, success stories of uh, Chinese Peruvians. Back here on Calle Capon, the uh, main old street, and I found this little place. It's a restaurant, but up in front, it looks like they have a little bakery. So let's go in and see if we can get some baked goods. So we ended up getting a couple of egg custard tarts from that bakery and uh, I ate them before filming them because I was very hungry and they were very delicious but um, I think that's gonna be it for the video I mean we've uh, hopefully you've uh, learned a little bit more about the history of uh, Chinese immigration here in Peru a little bit more about uh, about the uh, history of Chinese Peruvians and uh, and the current relationship between China and Peru um, like I said the history has not always been rosy um, but there have been some success stories for Chinese uh, immigrants here in Peru and uh, who knows what the future is going to hold for the relationship between China and Peru. Honestly, it's, uh, it's hard to predict, but hopefully you enjoyed this video and stick around. We're going to be making more videos, so we'll see you next time.